Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Assalamu alaikum Pakistan. Uh, we are continuing with uh, IFRS, which basically is the International Financial Reporting Standards. Uh, we talked about the IFRS uh, in our previous session. We looked at uh, what it is all about, uh, how the different stakeholders uh, tend to uh, integrate uh, the standards uh, into the Pakistani corporate market. What is the role of SECP? What is the role of ICAP? What is the role of IFRS itself? What is the role of the International Standards? Uh, accounting board. So, all of these stakeholders basically came into consideration and we were seeing that how they integrate to ensure that the IFRS standards are applicable in Pakistan across its corporate world. Uh, there are uh, issues definitely with any financial standard, even if we talk about the financial standards like ISO 9000, ISO 14000, ISO 17025, ISO 22000, ISO 27000, or if we talk about uh, the different uh, social accountability standards uh, and even the Kaizen management standards. So, I mean, there are different standards around the world which basically tend to internationalize any activity within an organization or within a particular country or within a particular region. And it tends to standardize things so that everyone can understand what they are doing. From an investment point of view and from the point of view of economics, uh, finance and accounting have become extremely important. And we see that through the IFRS standards, Pakistan is getting more acceptability across the globe and more financial investment is coming into the country because of the uh, prudent uh, systems and mechanisms which are being followed and enforced through the, international, uh, through the Institute of Chartered Accounts of Pakistan and the regulatory role which is played by the Securities Exchange Commission of Pakistan. Now, when we are looking at IFRS, it's not always economical, it's not always effective. It's not always something uh, which is going to benefit every organization because there is a cost to it and, and that can sometimes be borne by an organization and many organizations face a lot of financial constraints in it. And there, therefore, uh, in the case of Pakistan, there should be different standards for different types of entities because in Pakistan, we don't have very large uh, industrial entities or very large business or corporate groups. There are a few who can follow these standards, but most of the uh, companies in Pakistan are basically SMEs, small and medium enterprises. Now, when we have such a large bulge of SMEs, then it is extremely uh, necessary and vital that there are different standards which are applied to the different segments of the market. And it's nearly impossible for an SME to follow those regulations which are followed by a particular business group. Now, in the case of SMEs, uh, we see that uh, the IFRS should be according to its expansion area and the level of the organization, just like I was mentioning earlier, that is extremely important and only then uh, can we see the influx of IFRS in Pakistan and its broader acceptability, its uh, broader uh, implementation and its broader regulatory uh, coexistence uh, within the system of finance and accounting in Pakistan and therefore that would transcend into the uh, economic uh, market of Pakistan, making it uh, a favorable destination for different countries to invest in. So, again, these are very uh, important. At present, the IAS, the International, uh, the National, International Accounting Standard 39, is not affected due to the inaccessibility of information. Moreover, it is not affected due to the data quality as well as the decisions and estimates that differs across these businesses. So, again, uh, what we see is that depending upon the size of the business, from small, medium to large, uh, there are uh, different uh, dynamics of uh, data, there are different uh, dynamics of decision making, there are different dynamics uh, of standardization, there are different dynamics of uh, accessibility or inaccessibility of information. So, all of these things uh, are very important for the IFRS, especially because uh, when we are talking about the smaller organizations, then they cannot uh, endure uh, the, uh, the impact, the financial impact of having uh, well qualified individuals who would ensure that the IFRS standards are being met which uh, are globally acceptable. So, there has to be this customization and there has to be uh, this uh, size orientation and market segmentation in the IFRS to make it more effective and much more applicable not only in countries like Pakistan but also other uh, underdeveloped and developing countries across the world. There are issues in implementation, the techniques of predicting the forthcoming cash flows, contrast which brings about the usage of different procedures for the evaluation of financial declarations. So, again, depending upon the texture of the organization, we see uh, that uh, there are 
uh, cash flow constructs. We see that there are different procedures uh, and there are different evaluation of financial declaration. So all of these things tend to make it much more complex and complicated and therefore there is a great need of its contextualization and customization. According to SECP, mutual funds should not be taken as entities, so its financial reports cannot be amalgamated with the organization's uh, asset management. So again what we are seeing is that in Pakistan, uh, even the stock market uh, is managed differently, organized differently and therefore the Securities Exchange Commission of Pakistan would face many things in asset management. Uh, the international accounting standards involve the merging of financial reports. So IAS is, IAS is also in question for implementation by the Securities Exchange Commission of Pakistan. So again, we see these undulations and the indulations uh, in the process of financial reporting, of uh, accounting uh, amalgamation, and also of the reporting standards. Now, to make them all homogeneous and coherent with the international financial reporting standards, is a very uphill task, but not an impossible task, but there is a great need to improvise, there is a great need to segmentize, there is a great need to ensure that the standards are tweaked so that they can be accepted by the different segments of the Pakistan economy. There are also flaws in the IFRS regulations and the company's ordinance, for instance, in the conduct of revision space, in the balance sheet, in the duration of financial statements merger and other things. So, Again, what we see is that there are time lapses, uh, there are different matrices, there are different templates, uh, there are different uh, integrations, financial integrations which are taking place and all of these uh, make the IFRS sometimes uh, very difficult to implement and it can be looked as uh, flaws because of the straight jacket approach it basically has and this straight jacket approach in which one size fits all does not work at least in a country like Pakistan and therefore we have to be more innovative, we have to be more flexible and we have to see how those standards can be customized according to the ground realities of the corporate sector in Pakistan. Thank you so much.